topic um, in our um, six lessons subject, rather. Um, welcome, Sheikh you. Thank you very Lovely much. Lovely to see you this morning. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah. How are you? Fine, thank you. May Allah bless you. Thank you. Always so pleasure to see you. Good to see you, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. Always. So we have a question, um, and it's about um, maybe something that everybody at some point in their life goes through, um, praying salah regularly and the, the struggles with it. So someone's a que a question is, I am struggling to connect to Allah through my prayers. I easily miss them or delay them deliberately and then rush to complete them. It's a tick box. I'm considering to stop praying, but sometimes something keeps stopping me. Maybe it is my own conscience. How do I start to see my salah as less of a chore? Hmm. It's uh, sad to see that uh, this individual is struggling with his salah. Salah, maybe according to what he sees it there, salah is a burden. Sure, he says the word. Sure, yeah. 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 Work, like it's work. Yeah. And it shouldn't be like that. Salah needs to be enjoyed because Salah, when we talk about Salah, we call it prayers. Salah is a connection between me and my Lord. Why do I need to connect with my Lord? I need at least to say thank you to the one who created me. I became into who I am because of you. If someone does something good to me, even if I don't know him, I will always ask a question. Who did this good to me mm. in order for me to repay? Or at least to say thank you. Salah is there for us to say thank you to Allah. Mm. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the basic level. Mm. And number two, salah is there in order for me as an individual to be able to connect with myself. Myself, I need to connect with it. Because we are living in an in a age, modern life, where we are so busy, sometimes we miss even to connect with ourselves. Imagine how many screens sometimes we are working on. My phone, my uh, iPad, my Mac, and so on and so forth. And the forth. TV is on. A big one. TV is on, even I don't hear what's happening yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a life which we are living in. And sometimes... So, sorry, I would, yeah. can I, do you mind if I interrupt you here? Yeah. So, the connection with the self... And we're saying about this distraction. Yeah. Is it best when we pray to ha rid of, switch the TV off, make it quiet, so that it, you're able to make that connection? It is necessary to do that. Necessary to do. Otherwise, you will be distracted. And the distraction is killing us. Mm. Distraction is causing many problems within our psychology, even, with, even within our physical being. Because imagine you can't concentrate. You are dividing your mind here and there. And you don't know even, you are not enjoying the moment. Mm. By switching off, you are going to switch on your inner sense. When you are, you are on now with your inner sense, then you enjoy it. I, li I like the sound of that. Switch off to switch on. I Indeed. Like that's, powerful. that's powerful. Thank you very much. Thank you. For example, many people, they, they are, uh, uh, if you ask them the question, how many colors we see here? Just, just here we are sitting. Have you noticed how many colors? They say, oh, no, I don't know. No, now they will start looking. Oh, there's this gray, that one, and this. I, I am starting to do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Why? Because we are not aware of our surroundings, because we are not connecting with ourselves. Mm -hmm. But once you connect with yourself, then you can see the minute details which are surrounding you. You can enjoy them. You are building relationship with your creator. Not only seeing even sounds, how many voices are, here when you connect with yourself then you will be able to say okay i didn't notice that this is existing so now you are enjoying the company of your surrounding is that when imam ali salam, that's the state he had, he was in in his prayer switched off and then they he was injured and they had to pull out indeed indeed so that's uh, another benefit of salah i think the struggle which this uh, individual is facing is because maybe maybe the upbringing was a kind of wrong upbringing. If we force our children to pray, they will not like it. But if we nurture them to love the prayers, they will enjoy it. If we teach our children to know what they say, they will enjoy it. Most of us, unfortunately, we don't know what we say. 
Sallahu Akbar, Sami Allahu Liman Hamida, and so on and so forth. What's the meaning of this? <coughs> Sorry. So we, we need, in order for us to enjoy our Salah, to know the meanings of the wordings of Salah. And then to try to ask the question, why these actions? Mm, mm, why mm. Qiyam standing? Why Ruku bowing? Why again standing? Why Sujood? Why these actions? Today, when we, we try to find the similarities with other people, recently, for example, the discovery says that Muslims, when they pray properly, they will be kept away from back pain. Why? Because there is sort of an exercise of the back and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. we didn't know, we just pray. So if we ask the questions why and the benefits which we'll see there, nobody will stop praying. So when we hear stories, for example, this imam used to pray thousand rakah per day. We wonder how did he manage to do that? Of course, with Mustahabbat ruling, uh, is on Islamic ruling, when we pray Mustahab recommended prayers, yeah. you don't need just to, to be in one physical position for you to stand and do ruku. You can do it while driving. You can do it while mounting on a camel. You can do facing any direction. It's fine. You can even pray by just saying the words. So we How need... How does that work then for people who don't know? So you're riding a camel. Yeah. For example, riding a horse, riding a camel. You are, you are just going with your business. Then here you can, you can imagine. Okay, now I'm strutting. My salah, Allahu Akbar. The, the horse, the camel faces different direction. Just continue. So it is kind of dhikr. You are mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering him. This will make you to be in constant communication with your creator. It's, yeah, because I, I heard that there was this, um, a famous, um, or, you know, well-known devout scholar. And he was, uh, you know, exiled for his from his own country. So he was living in somewhere <coughs> in Europe. But he had never lived in a society like that where people dressed the way they, you know, the absence of hijab and the absence of modesty, male and female. Mm. So to protect himself spiritually he would have his zikr beads if he had to go to the shop and he would be making salat on his way to the shop or anywhere mm. to do his necessaries and back just to as a protection for him to be yeah. able to yeah. live continuous Ahsan. continuous prayer continuous yeah prayer. so these techniques are very important now coming back to the issue of salah again most of the time we see especially the young ones they may reject to pray especially on time they find it it is a struggle i think the parents need to come uh, into their lives and to explain why they did uh, ask them to pray since when they started praying because of the benefits which will come afterwards. There is a belief which says when we die, yeah, many people will struggle at the time of death. But at the same time, those who are paying attention to Salah, they will find it easy. And at the time of death, it is the time when we need to, be, to, to find peace. So peace will come if I have lived myself this way, that I have made myself to pray on time, constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be no, no regret, because I will say that I have done what my Lord wants me mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And finally, on this particular point, we need to start teaching our children salah when they are very young. The Holy Prophet says from age seven. Ten, when they become ten, then of course, for boys it becomes like wajib. It's not wajib until they go to the age of bulu. The question here is why? When they start, their, when they are very young, it will become easy for them. Sometimes even for those who observe fasting, you find a boy, young boy, a young girl, and then you know that they are observing fasting especially in summertime, then you wonder, how did you manage to do that? They say, well, I'm used to do it. It's easy for me. Why? It's because they started when they are very when, young. When children are very, very young, mm. they love Salah. Indeed. I remember my children when they were small, you know, they always want to come and pray and put down. And make, <laughs> but when sad. they get older, you know, it take a little bit more uh, I, I yeah. gentle encouragers. I think children <laughs> give false hope that they're very young, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a call. Oh. Um, yes. oh, Sister Zahra from London. Welcome. Salam Alaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. So you have a question for us? Yeah, um, thank you so much, by the way, for um, answering my call. I'm really loving the You're show. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
So I'm, I'm from a non-religious family where we're just Muslim by name and um, I was never really fully taught the concept of ghusl um, because we never prayed. I mean, like, the only thing what you practice we did was fasting. Um, but I looked into Islam at the age of 20 and that's when I started fully practicing it correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I fasted for all these years, uh, but I didn't have the knowledge of bustle. So does that mean that I have to do my fasts again? Thank you so mm. much. Thank you so much. Yeah, ya Allah. Thank you very much, sister. This, this is one of those problematic questions. Uh, Amongst our scholars, there are those who say if you miss to do something correctly, which is connecting with your salah, then your salah is void. You have to repay all the salah for all the period when you did something wrong. And there are those who say, well, it's fine. So long as now you know it, you can start from now Mm -hmm. to pay attention to the issue of ghusl, for example, this question uh, from our sister. So to be on the safe side, what I can say here, sister, you need to refer to your marja. And uh-huh. when we say marja, mm-hmm. we, means, we mean the person who is a jurist you follow on your Islamic issues. And uh, the jurist will come and say, okay, it's fine, or it's fine, or not fine, you have to repay, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So this is this to is be... Referred back yeah. to the marja, that makes yeah. sense, but it's quite a difficult situation isn't it the children Indeed. don't aren't raised in that environment and then they learn later yeah it's very um, it is difficult yeah. so sorry oh I, I just wanted to ask about the mental side of <coughs> salah because <coughs> there's outward actions which we learn from the textbooks which are taught by people that take the time to teach us whether it's our parents or, or somebody who's dowered us or whatever this scenario is but there's an inner aspect of the salah which is very difficult in terms of not thinking about my pin number and memorizing my oh you know shopping list and stuff mm. these distracting thoughts often come people talk about them coming into the mind mm. so it's praying outwardly is okay but inward devotion concentration like maybe inwardly the, the, the soul isn't facing the kibla the soul is facing the dunya mm. but the body's facing sure the kibla. how do we how do we attack this shit? very important point and i think uh, on the basis of uh, the hadith from the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam where he says As-salatu mi'rajul mu'min. Salah is mi'raj. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's ascension of a believer. It raises me from one level to another. For me to be able to understand my Lord. That he deserves to be worshipped. It's not Jannah in Nara, paradise and hell. No. He deserves to be served. He, he deserves to be worshipped. So once I come to know that, then it will be uh, like Salah, it's not... It's not for Allah. Salah is for me. And not only just for me. In order for me to be a perfect being in terms of my salah, I need to pray. Because otherwise it will not help me. So I need the way of akhlaq approach to this masala fiqhia. Uh, some scholars say salah starts from the time when you, pray, you, you perform your wudu. Mm-hmm. When you wash your face to say, I'm cleaning my face in order for me to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I should also clean my heart from envy, enmity, hasad, and so on and so forth. When I'm standing for salah to say, Allahu Akbar, it means that I say Allah is greater than anything else, and I need to pay attention to that, not to pay attention to any other thing. Allahu Akbar. I pray to Allah, I'm facing towards Qibla, meaning that the whole dunya is back. It's only Allah who is in front of me. I'm, I'm, I don't pay attention to whatever is mm-hmm. surrounding me. Mm-hmm. It is Allah. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Oh, I start with Bismillah and Surah al Fatiha and so on and so forth. I'm conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I understand what I'm doing, then nothing will be greater or bigger than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will continue to pray. It will come to a point where I will say, I don't want to finish my salah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, so somebody who's a mu'min, a mm. true believer, what is their prayer like? So we hear the people that we relate to, mm. oh, what's on for dinner tonight, oh, I've got to do this, all your chores are listing on your hands. What is the prayer of a believer? Not even I'm a, a mm. but an ordinary person who's a devout believer in Allah. Are there, is their soul singing? 
What are, what are they going through? What's the beauty of the prayer? That I think the, the, the least I can say is that they enjoy the moment of Salah. Mm. One alim said, if you come to a point of remembering that you are Musalla, the place where you are standing to pray, that this is the only thing I possess in this world, mm. and always you remind yourself about that, then it will bring peace of the mind, peace of the heart. You will not fight with anybody because this is what I possess. If I want anything, I'll come to my territory, this musalla, for me to say, Ya Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, don't give me this. And when I say, Alhamdulillahi, Lillahi, it is only belongs to Allah, who is Rabbul Alameen. So you will see that the, the true believers, when they pray, they enjoy the moment of their salah. And number two, that awareness that I'm standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes them not to want to finish even their salah. Few things can be seen from the believers that when they pray, you can see that there's something fresh from their faces, from their hearts, from the way they mingle with people. Why? Because salah has changed them. And it is this kind of salah we need to go into rather than to make it a mechanical and just to talk mm -hmm. about fiki issues there is more than fiki and mechanical issues to do with salah and that is spiritual inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar salah keeps us away from indecency and evils why we see now today many people who pray they do a lot of bad issues it means that they don't understand their salah their salah is not okay Tanha anil fahsha iwal munkar. Salah, if is prayed properly, then there will be no any other problems within the communities and so on and so forth. And this is what we need to aim so, to. So just on that point, Sheikh, because we, we're coming to a close, but just really wanted to, to, to get your take on this before we finish, is that for those people, for those people who know how to pray, yeah. but are still, as we're all a work in progress, continue, uh, you know, we still can benefit from continuing to go back to master in our salah to try and put some light in our face and stuff like that and keep us away from the shameful deeds indeed salah even if we don't see the 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 benefits of salah in terms of changing our lives we still need to continue it's like when i come to your house brother bilal i knock at the door one time and i wait can i just go and say well i knocked the door and he didn't <laughs> open for me i'll keep on knocking at the door until yeah. you come and say okay what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us moments for us. We can go and knock at his door again and again until he allows us to be there as the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to keep it up, continue pray until a time will come when our maturity and our learning will make us to understand the salah more than the way we understand it. Uh, if we don't pay attention. So I was going to say about this particular person, so they should continue to pray, Indeed. not to give it up, and then no. pray that Allah gives them that response in terms of the peace and connection they may feel. Yes, indeed. And maybe just to add uh, to what the brother has said there, he needs to try to understand the meanings of mm -hmm. the words which he says in Salah. He needs to ask those who are closer to him, can you pray for me too? Because mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. to enjoy my Salah, but maybe something is stopping me. Pray for me. If there is a mother there, he needs to go closer. Mom, please pray mm. for me because I don't enjoy my salah. The prayer of the mother is so important. If the father is there also, and mu'minin and mu'minat, he needs sometimes to give sadaqah. This, these are for his own benefit. And he will be, inshallah, ta'ala rewarded. Inshallah. Wow, I look, it's like having a little budget here. This was a powerful morning. This is a powerful morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shaykh. Thank you. And uh, next up, we're going to...